Hey guys, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a new Freenas video. Today I want to show you how you can back up from one Freenas to another using rsync. We are going to make an example configuration right here and uh, I will show you which steps are required to set up a automatic rsync synchronization between your main NAS and your backup NAS if you will. So you can see I have two NASes here installed. Well, one is my main uh, NAS and the other one is my backup NAS, which I built together from old hard drives and stuff like that. So I want to utilize it to back up my main NAS, at least the most important files. And that's what we are going to do with rsync because it's a very reliable system to back up your data from one free NAS to another. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a rsync module on our main NAS. So let's go to sharing. Actually, it's to services, then to rsync and rsync modules. And then we want to add a rsync module. So let's call that for the sake of it. Let's call it sync. Then we need to choose the path that you want uh, to basically that you want to replicate to the other NAS. Uh, for this purpose, we are going to use my photography, um, my photography folder here, and uh, we can leave this on read and write. We can choose, or we have to choose the root user and the wheel group. And you could enter allowed hosts in here and denied hosts, but because I just have anyway two addresses I want to do that so click on OK and we should now see the module right here that looks good it's the share it's on the root user that's perfect then we need to create a new rsync task so to do that we have to go to tasks rsync tasks and click on add task then we also have to give it the path. So in this case, it's also the photography path, the exact same that you were choosing in the module before. And we also add the root user. And then we need to enter the address of the remote host. And as you can see here, the uh, remote host has almost the same address. It's just on a different subnet. So I'm just going to copy it right there need to remove the HTTP. And what else do we need? We need to uh, make it an rsync module. We don't need to do it over SSH, even we could. And then we give it a, a name. Let's see. Short description and remote module name. I just also call it sync, whatever. Then direction is in this case push because uh, our free NAS or our backup NAS will then have the direction pull. So this one is pushing, the other one is pulling pretty straightforward. And uh, then you could choose a time each selected, minu uh, each selected minute. Uh, you can sync it every 15 minutes, whatever. I sync it every 30 minutes because I will only, um, I will anyway only plug in this NAS or, or boot it up when I want to sync my data. So probably once a week or something like that. So I just keep it on 30 minutes. Uh, you can choose the hour and day of the month. You can select every day of the month. You could select on every fifth, whatever. If you have both NAS running, you can set this schedule up however you like. I will just leave it now uh, like it is. So let's go down. Here you can also choose it which months, which day of the week. And I think the rest we can pretty much leave as default and we have to check enabled as well. And I guess that's it for that. All right, that's created. Let's view the rsync tasks just to verify that everything is correct. That looks pretty good. I just double check if we need a remote path, but I don't think so because we will set it up on the other NAS. All right, let's continue with the next step. Now we need to log into our 
backup NAS and also create a rsync module. So let's go to services again, rsync and add a rsync module once again. Then let's see what we need to do. We need to enter a name. So we call this also sync like the other one because it doesn't really matter. And then we need to select a path. I will just go ahead and choose my my main uh, data set that I created here. So it will pull the data right in there, which is fine. So we can leave it as it is here. And then we also need to assign the root user and the wheel group. So we have it equally like on the other one. And that's it for that. We can click on OK. And then we also need to create a rsync task. Basically, we are doing the exact same things like we did before. As I said, this time we will set it as pull. So let's choose the same folder here the root user the remote host in this case is the exact uh, address of the main NAS that's fine we call it sync we can still change that later and this time we are going to choose direction pull as I said before and we put whatever we can leave that as it is or make it same as in the other one uh, da, 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 let's see. Okay, that all looks good. We click on OK. And then we need to enable the rsync service on both devices. So let's go to services. And actually we can we have to go here. Services and let's see what do we have here. Da, da, where is it? Rsync. Start. And we also want to start it up on boot because I just want to switch this machine on and then it automatically starts its sync tasks. So the same thing here, go on services and let's see our sync start on boot and start now. All right, then if we want to run the task right now, we can just simply go to tasks. I'm on the main NAS now and rsync tasks, then we can select it and hit run now. And it should automatically also start the pull on the other on the other NAS. We will check that in a minute once it started to put some data in there. And sure enough, it just took a couple of seconds. I just checked that on uh, my NAS directly. And as you can see here, it just in this moment created the photography share that it's now pulling uh, all the data into. So now you have to wait until the task is finished. I actually don't know if there is some indication. Let's have a look. If we can see if it's running. Alright, so I just double check that and actually the only way as of now you can check the progress is by running a shell command. Um, I can, I will do it like, I will go to display system processes and as long as rsync is running and using up a lot of CPU power, you can be sure that it's still running. And you just have to simply wait until it's uh, done and once it's done synchronizing the the process CPU uh, should go down again and that should be an indication that the process is finished. But uh, most people will anyway leave their uh, NAS running so it doesn't really matter when it's finished. You can just leave it on for a couple of hours and then the process should be finished. You can also check it by go to by going to reporting, I believe, and just checking the network traffic. So as long as the traffic is up on full uh, consumption, basically, you can be sure that the rsync task is still running. So I just read an article about that they're planning to implement a GUI where you can see a progress bar and stuff like that, or that it was requested, but apparently it's not implemented yet, which is a shame. So 
as long as it's not there, you have to check it that way. But this basically, that's it. That uh, concludes the tutorial because now you have rsync running and you can just play around with the time schedule that you want it to be synced. We can uh, make a double check uh, that it's actually pulling uh, data into it and it is because it's filling up uh, my disk space here. I can see that. So the task is still running and everything is working fine. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more Freenas videos in the future. Thanks for watching, until next time.